All right, what's up, guys? This year we've moved on to the dirt because all right, cut. What's up, guys? This year we're moving on to the dirt since I like riding ATVs and dirt bikes so much. Not doing as much street riding this year. Most of my videos are going to start being geared towards off road riding, hill climbs, mud bogs, etc. etc. So I went out, bought myself the new 2020 Honda Talon. She's not as beautiful as she was a couple a couple months ago. She's been through the dirt and been through the ringer a couple of times. Anyways, I uh, one of the upgrades that I wanted to do on this was the Warrior snorkel kit on the Honda Ta Honda Talon. And from my understanding, this Warrior kit works on the 19 and the 20. But the instructions are super I wouldn't say they're unclear. They're doable. I did it, and I'm not a mechanic by any means. So I figured I'd at least go ahead and walk you through all the key points, the things that took me way too long to figure out. Uh, if I would have known these things ahead of time, I probably would have had this done in less than an hour. But it took me a full day to do it, to figure out which hoses I need to work on and whatnot. And uh, I'll try to walk you through this as simple as possible. And point out all the things that I think would make it easier. So if you're watching this, 2020 Honda Talon Warrior Snorkel Kit. Uh, it's three and a half inch piping. Uh, it runs about 169, Ronnie Mac, on, uh, on their website. I got it actually from um, their website. I can't think of the name of it. You type it in Google, you'll find it. So anyways, I'll run you through what it looks like, take you through the key points, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you it in action because I have already taken it through the lake. I got it on the GoPro, but I wanted to make a whole video out of it. So right after I get done talking, like right now, I'll show you us going through the lake, which is four or five feet deep. So. So now you got to see the warrior snorkel in action. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what it looks like on and all the key points. And I'll, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take the panels apart on camera. I'm gonna do everything from top to bottom as if it was on, uh, as if I was just going through it new. So let's, let me go ahead and get this whipped around. All right, there you can see, that's what the, uh, snorkel itself looks like 
Mind you, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a body parts kind of guy. Not the best with the skills, but it works. That's all I care about, functionality. So it runs up the passenger side on the right. Your air intake is actually underneath this. Not this, surprisingly. It comes down here. And then it goes, uh, get it through here. Make it look good. So it actually comes down right here. And it goes into your air box. Right back here. And then I'll, I'll take all this off so you can see it. But uh, that's, that's all it is. Uh, the only hole you will need to drill is right here in the blue. Not this. Uh, the 2019 might be different, but again, this is 2020. So you need a three and a half inch saw drill bit, hole drill bit, and you'll drill out. Now, one mistake that I made, I, I drilled out too far this way. You have to come in here, and there's going to be a pop rivet on this back side, and you won't actually be able to see it because I've got it sealed up real good. But right on the back, yeah, I'm, I'm real close. So there's a pop rivet that's down inside of here. If you use that as your guide, it'll fit perfectly and line up. Um, I didn't want to cut that pop rivet out, so I actually started over farther where I, where I didn't have to cut that pop rivet out. Well, when I did that, my S-tubing that runs up in here, so the S-pipe, it comes out of your OEM airbox, S-curves up and into this snorkel up here. So I wanted to keep my pop rivet. Well, when I did that, that S fitting didn't work. So don't do what I did and try to make it work because it doesn't. You actually have to cut out that pop rivet there and it's kind of pain in the butt, but it's not too bad if you got an electric drill. So that's the only hole you'll have to drill. The kit comes with this. I live in a cool sack in the middle of the city. We got people who are just riding full wheelers. Right on. Turning this whole neighborhood into ATV ride. Alright, so, anyways, the kit comes with the two metal bands, obviously. It comes with this rubber gar grommet. Grommet? Whatever. The snorkel itself, it comes with this little plastic piece that you can paint and then JB weld in there. Inside here, there's like a little black mesh filter kind of deal. It comes with, of course, zip ties, because everybody loves zip ties, and it comes with this uh, tubing. Uh, key note, I don't know if these snorkels are just kind of general purpose for everybody, but this tubing is actually too big. Um, this is the tubing it came with, so it does work, but when you come down to adding it, when you run this tubing, it doesn't fit right with the OEM hoses. Uh, I'll actually get the hose size, and that's going to be my next upgrade. I'm going to actually run this tubing the correct way. Uh, and not the correct way, but uh, tighter fitting. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So let me go ahead and pop off these back pieces. I'm going to pop off my air box cover, and I'm going to pop off the hood. So let me go ahead and do that. Alright, so I've got all the, I got all my covers popped off. I got my back here, or my front here popped off. I got the rear popped off, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so going through this, you're going to have five lines total. You're going to run five clear vent lines. You're going to have three in the front, two in the back. So make sure you get all of them. Your first one is going to be your fuel vent line. You're going to have a radiator fan vent motor vent line, and you're going to have your front differential vent line. The two in the back is going to be your, your rear, different, rear differential vent line and your transmission vent line. I'll show you those here in a minute. I'm going to try to get you in and show you where all the OEM ones fit. So first of all, I'm going to show you your fuel vent line. So for ease of access, pop your skid plates off. And you can get to this one if you crawl in through the front underneath and look up. You'll be able to chase your drive shaft up to the front that goes to the front four-wheel drive. You'll see a roll cage bar that comes up through the middle. 
you know, it runs down right here. Essentially, there's a bar right down here. These vent lines all attach to the roll, like the inside internal roll cage system. So I'm gonna, like I said, it's easiest to lay on your back, go in through the front, look up, it'll be right there. So I'm gonna take you in through this way though, just so I can show you, cause I'm not crawling around in the grass. So on my system, I got all these red, yellow, blue, and black. That's for my winch, this box right here. It's a little dirty, but I got a box right here. So if this doesn't look familiar on yours, that's why. It's because my winch, it's aftermarket. That's where I decided to install it. So when you're looking at this, just ignore these cables, ignore this box. Now, if you're looking at it, this is the passenger foot space right here. So when you're trying to find this, come in through the, through the wheel well, find, find where your passenger's feet essentially sit, Right above it, you'll see this bar. It runs from the passenger side over to the driver's side. And you'll find this bar. And if you look back, like I said, this is a lot easier to find when you're underneath of it. I'm gonna try to focus it up here. All right. Now, if you go past that one, you'll see this bar right back there. Obviously, it's out of finger length, but I'm just trying to play camera tricks here. See this bar, and if you look right there, let me zoom in on it. That's actually a little, little plastic barb that goes inside that frame. Right there is what I'm talking about. Now, if before you put the snorkel on and you're looking for all these vent lines, there will be a black fuel line, essentially. I'm sorry about that. There'll be a black fuel line running from the passenger side underneath its seat it'll run up and it'll be pushed into that so all you gotta do is just pull that off there pull that fuel line off the snorkel kit will actually come with a couple barbs it comes with a uh, three-way barb and it comes with a white clear single barb uh, pipe fittings you'll take the single clear barb and you'll attach this hose here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it down there. That's kind of where I ran it. So that, once you pull that off the roll cage, you'll attach a barb to one side, and then you'll run about three feet is what I did. I ran three feet of this clear tubing, and then I rolled it up into like a lasso or like some kind of like a snake reel or something. You'll roll it up, I gave it one, two, three, four good rolls, about that big. I mean, that's the size of my hand. And then the other end, you can just leave open. You can zip tie that up, and I just zip tied it behind this little piece here. You'll have to take this off of here. Oh my gosh. Phone's blowing up. So you'll, that, I just put mine right back there. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put it. I would suggest putting it as high as you possibly can. That's about as high as I can get it right there. And make sure you don't pinch it tight. You don't want to pinch any of these tubes closed. Just so they're rolled up. Now the point of rolling this is if you get fuel or you know water comes back in, it uses gravity so it traps the water at the bottom of these reels and hopefully nothing backfills all the way back into your fuel. So that's where this that one is. Now that's one, we got four more to go. The front's not too hard because it's pretty easy to work on the front. Now, the next one we'll talk about is your uh, radiator motor vent line. And this might be easier to see this way, but I'm afraid the sun's gonna be really bright. All right, so now we're looking down inside. And this one right here. Find it. Okay. So you got a vent line on your right side of your radiator. So that way, that way is the passenger side. This way is the driver's side. So this is us looking at our back of our radiator fan. And there's a hose that comes out of the bottom, and they've got it routed coming up this way. And the OEM one comes all the way up here. Now I cut it because it just runs into nothing and I couldn't pull it out. So, and I, like I said, you've seen me drive it, you know it works. Uh, I need sunlight. Try to get a good view in here. Alright, 
So you can see where I cut this one. The one that comes off the bottom radiator comes up and it used to attach there. I cut it, I put this three-way barb in here. This is that black barb they give you, okay? Because you're actually gonna connect two vent lines and run it to one hose. This is the aftermarket hose here. So you got OEM, OEM, and I'll show you where this one connects here in a second, and aftermarket. This is gonna be the one that you run to the top of your snorkel. So, uh, what I was talking about earlier is the hose they give you is too big for these barbs. These barbs fit your OEM hoses fine, but you have to use a zip tie on their hose to make it fit, and I don't like that. So I went to Lowe's and found some hose that fit. I don't have it on here yet, but I do know that it fits these barbs, and I'm gonna eventually pull all these lines out and run it to the snorkel itself. So anyways, that's your second, that's your second uh, hose in the front. So I got three more to go. So the last, and, last one up front is gonna be your, I, I think it's the differential, yep. Rear, dif rear differential, front differential. So if we look all the way down, let's see if it'll focus here. If you see that one right there, it's coming up and then it goes behind the my winch cables, the blue and blue and yellow there. And you'll see it runs all the way up and it comes over on the front side of this. Now where that attaches at, give you some orientation here. Front of the vehicle, passenger side over here, driver side over here. So we're looking at it from directly front. This one comes up and attaches right here. So if you're looking in here, you can find this hose right here. You can find the little nipple that's attached right there. So that's where your front differential vent line attaches to. It's on, the ro it's on this little support frame here, plastic hose out here. So you'll pull that one out and you'll plug it into the other side of your bar. Just like that. Now, go focus. There we go. So I just got a three-way barb on there. I got OEMs connecting at a T-barb and I got the aftermarket tubing running all the way back and that's gonna be the one that runs to the top of your snorkel. So. Like I said, fuel vent line, radiator fan, motor vent line, front differential vent line. Those are the three up front. Make sure you get them all. The radiator vent line and the front differential are the ones that you'll run to the aftermarket hose and you'll run it to the back. Your fuel vent line is the one you'll wrap up and just cut off and hang high. And I put mine behind this piece of plastic here whatever it is rubber now it's nice and clean looking in there then I run it all through the back I ran it right through the middle on top of the skid plates all right so now we're facing the back obviously driver side passenger side but like I said I want to make this stupid dumb because I wish I had it stupid dumb for me when I was doing it because I'm not a mechanic and I'm just kind of guessing my way through it so don't take my word for the law but Alright, so all I did was take off that back panel, you know, it's just the two screws here, here, it pops right out, rest in there. Really, you don't even need to take this off and mess with it. There's nothing you do inside your air box, and if you don't know, this is your air box. Uh, it's also sometimes a pain in the butt because a couple of these little, it just comes off with these, but there's, you know, ten of them or whatever, and some of them are kind of hard to get to. Okay. So because I've already got mine installed and siliconed, I'm gonna have to just kinda, I'll show you the vent lines, but I'm not gonna take off the fender and everything. I, I took some footage on my camera to show you, or on my phone. It's probably not the best quality compared to this, but you'll get the gist. So let me just go ahead and show you the back, back two vent lines. So your back two vent lines. All right, your back one is gonna be this rear differential here, okay? And you'll be able to find the hose for this one is right here. Get the camera back there without breaking my lens. All right, so 
this one right here, real close to the camera, is actually the vent line. Let me focus. So that's going to run down onto your back differential. And I'm on the passenger side, back tire looking at this. So let me pull it back in here. And so that tube, you'll find it directly in the middle. It'll run up. It's so dang bright out here. I don't, I don't think going to, yeah, maybe going to the other side will get you a better view. Not really. All right, well, so this is the driver's side here. You can at least see where the vent line goes in, okay? That's gonna be the vent line we're talking about right here. But when, it, when it's ran OEM style, it's actually connected on the passenger side. So if you just find this too, follow it up, you'll find it to the bar. I'll show you where the nipple is. But if you can find them, it becomes real easy. All right, so now we're back on the passenger side. And the nipple for it is right here. Let's see if I can block the sun a little. All right, so that nipple right there is gonna be your rear differential vent line connection. You'll pop that off, and this Warrior kit comes with the second barb, uh, T-barb, a little black one, and, well, all right, I'm gonna put my foot in my mouth for a minute. The hoses are too short. The rear differential hose will not connect to that T-bar that it comes with to your sub-transmission uh, vent line. And so you'll see, I went to Lowe's and just bought myself a real nice copper barb. I bought the actual size tubing so that I didn't have to use a zip tie on it. So I, what I did is I got a barb, and I'll get those sizes for you at the very end here uh, of tubing that I use so you can get it on the first try without having to buy three different sizes. So I got the barb. I ran just a little bit of line just to make it longer because it doesn't fit. Now your second line is going to be your sub transmission. And for all of you that don't know, this right here, where's my hand? Right there. That is your sub transmission. This is the vent line for it. It runs up and connects to, I really don't remember. Oh yeah, this one was a pain in the butt, okay. So, this vent line, once you find it, you'll be able to see it. I doubt I'll be able to get it on camera because it was such a pain in the butt. But it ran straight up along this wall. So the back of the seats there. I'm trying to keep this in focus. And it runs real deep up in there. And there's another nipple way up there. So if you can find the vent line here, you'll be able to trace it down. You actually don't have to pop any parts off for any of these vent lines. So you'll be able to find that, find this line. Like I said, it runs straight up. And once you run it up there, you'll see that it's just connected with a little, you know, it's just pushed in there with a little clamp on it. Take a little clamp off, pop it off the nipple, put you a barb in there. And you can see up here, I actually ran my own. Oh shit, I'm gonna break this camera. Where is it at? There it is. Okay. See so again with this one. That's the sub transmission, sub transmission fuel uh, vent line there. And I just extended that one. I went out and bought my own little barb, connected the two up, made sure they were a tight fit. And then what I did is I ran myself a bunch of slack. I wasn't gonna deal with it. Ran myself some slack. And I brought them up here and I kind of curled them just like I did that gas line. It doesn't say to do that in the instructions, but I did do it. It looks like I actually got a little water in there still. Not a big deal. So, and this is my other one here. This is the one that I ran from the front. See, it's only one line that comes back here. God, I'm being eaten a lot by mosquitoes. So you'll have that one that's coming from the front. You'll run it straight up. It goes to the top of your snorkel. You got your other two that connect into one. Right back here. I know it looks like a mess, but this is only two lines here. I just kind of rolled them up and zip tied them. You can see that's that's where they connect right here. I, I got a, a barb on them. And then I ran, if you look up there, 
there's only two lines that actually go up there. The two lines are the one from the front, the three that connect into one, and then the back, the two that connect into one. And then I ran those up. I just came through this here. It's kind of a tight fit. I'm trying to push it through those holes. And these run up. The back side, you run through the warrior riser. And these are the vent lines out of there. So now you got all five vent lines and their locations. If you guys have any issues on where to find them, just leave a comment. And trust me, I'm not that popular, so I actually see the comments, read them, and I'll actually reply to you. So go ahead. Any questions? You've seen mine work. You've seen it installed. And we'll get to answering all your questions. Whatever. I, yeah, I'm just rambling now. So anyways, after you get all that done, zip tie it all up nice and clean. Make sure you don't pinch anything with the zip ties. And uh, I'll try to stick this footage up here. Uh, what you're going to have to do is take out, uh, I think from this pop rivet here, you're going to take out this pop rivet, and then the rest of them are on the back side. You'll take out all these pop rivets. It's so bright out here. You'll take out all those pop rivets. Just on the passenger side. And then there'll be a couple pop rivets in here. And I, I think I showed this again on my phone a little bit better just because I'm in the garage and it, it's actually deassembled. You cut your hole, put it in there, put your silicone on. I suggest getting a bigger zip tie than this. I just use this one so it doesn't have any wiggle room because we do a lot of trail riding more than water crossing. but. I just wanted it to be as stiff as possible and you know, still not as comfortable with that as, as I'd like it to be. But it's enough, it works. Then you'll paint this whatever color you want. Put your filter in there and it's kind of hard to do. You kind of gotta get them in there at the same time. JB weld it, hold it tight, let it sit in there. Uh, make sure all your clamps are nice and tight. Um, you don't actually have to change anything to your air intake in here. Uh, you'll take out the factory one and you'll run that S pipe. You'll use the factory grommet. Grommet? Dang, I can't say that word. That's on the inside of here. And you, I don't think you'll be able to see it. Not really. No, whatever. And it's already got the clamp on it. You'll just cinch it all down, call it a day. Then you'll be able to take this thing in some fairly deep water. Um, I will note that uh, after every time, pop this back around so I can talk to you guys. I will note after every time that we went through deep water, which has only been twice now, uh, but on the same day, we brought it back. I changed the oil. To, I changed the oil, transmission, sub transmit, sub transmission, and my differential. Uh, fluids and oil and grease and all that stuff uh, and I definitely gave it a good cleaning so I definitely re recommend doing that even though you have this on here yeah uh, it's not a foolproof but it'll help you in bad situations and it does work so if you like the video don't forget to like it share it comment if you need help leave a comment and I'll try to answer it but again not a mechanic just know how to take care of my own stuff and put it on and like I said I'm making this video because it took me way too long to figure it out so hopefully after watching this for 15 minutes you'll be able to do it in 10 so talk to you later all right so this is i'm shooting this from my phone so sorry for the quality but i don't feel like doing all kinds of video editing so what i did is i pulled all the paw rivets out of this little bad boy for the most part this is my black fender on the honda talon 2020 I pulled a couple out of this one that hold it on, but it's still on there solid. And um, actually, this is my air intake here. This is the coupler for that. As you can tell, it's got one bolt that comes out of here. It's got one, two, three pop rivets. It's already out. And uh, you, I'm, when you take this apart, you're going to have a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of pop rivets. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine I mean here you gotta take out that many pop rivets just to get your air intake out 
I also had to pop off the air box and a little trick. I don't know if it's a little trick, but the smart thing to do, go ahead and throw a clean t-shirt over your air intake. So nights like this, where there's 300 June bugs out, none of them fall down there, no dirt falls down there, no bolts fall down there, no pop rivets fall down there. Anyways, took this air, this uh, air cover off. All you gotta do is pop these bad boys off and just pull it off. Then you'll take out a pop rivet here. Just one up here. Actually taking that off only made it easier to get to that one. Once you get that off, once you uh, once you take this fender off, excuse me, this off, the couple pop rivets here, and one or two more, this will come off of it. This sits up there. Like this. I got it covered in mud because we just went mudding. Anyways, so this sits up there like that. Those pop rivets come off. It's not held with anything but pop rivets. You can take that off. And then what you'll see is this under there. And this will sit up there like... Oh, uh, shoot. Hold on. Alright, so this sits up there. The light's bright. Like this. It goes right down there. Connects right there. And all you have to do is take off this one little bolt right here. And this will just slide out once you get all, enough pop rivets out. But you don't need to unscrew anything. You don't need to, you know, wrench anything off. You just need to pop the pop rivets out. And there's a ton of them. So anyways, like I said, one more time. Clarity. Pop rivets to this black fender. You don't got to take it all the way off. But you're going to have to take out at least 20 of them. There'll be a couple on the back side of this blue one. You have to take this out, pop a couple of those out. There'll be a couple more that hold on that big box right here. You'll pop them out, pop them out, pop them out. For the most part, it'll be pretty loose and you'll be able to tell where it's still being hung up at. But once you pop those out, that guard will pop out. Go ahead and take off your air box. There's one pop rivet in there. Make sure you cover up your air intake on the opposite side of the filter so nothing falls in or else you're going to have even bigger issues. Go ahead and take out that one pop rivet, unscrew this bolt right here. Your whole air intake will just come right out of here. It's only held on by two pop rivets, I swear to God. So you go ahead and take that out, save all your pop rivets. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole three and a half inches right here. My snorkel is going to go down. Through here, I'm gonna mount it coming up through the back side of this roll cage. It's gonna face that way. I'm gonna take it through the three and a half inch hole. I'm gonna use the S bin that it came with, tie it right back in there, clamp this down, and I'm gonna put my shield back over it. I might leave it all undone so I can power wash this because Jesus. Apparently I didn't do that good of a job. But we just went out yesterday, so here we are. The whole piece? Oh, Clint, I was wondering why they said you gotta cut that out. It's because this bad boy wants to sit on it. So we just drilled our hole and I got my S pipe sitting up here. I'm gonna take a quarter inch ratchet here and tighten this onto my pipe here. Well, maybe. I have to give me an extension. A little nuts a quarter inch. It's too tight there. Go ahead and tighten that up. I don't have an extension for this little quarter inch drive though.
tell you, we're going to silicone the shit out of this. Stop the cornering up and down. Left and right are no fucking way though. Everything you're cored up and down is going to be the same. Or if you put it right left. Alright. So we got our snorkel on now through that three and a half inch hole we cut right here. I did have to cut out the piece. This hole here, I wanted to save that clip. Turns out we can't save that clip, so we had to cut through there to make that fit better. I don't know why you're cording down in it, but now we can put the snorkel on top. <laughs> Ain't that interesting down the hole? I might, I might actually cut out a little bit. Since we took out this rivet anyways, I might bring that hole this way just a little bit more so it just has a nicer, cleaner fit. So I might take that three and a half inch drill bit and give myself another couple centimeters there.